Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. So today, I honestly just kind of felt like sitting down and playing with some makeup. I feel like, you know, I've been so caught up in, um, you know, trying different kinds of makeup that I haven't tried in a long time and re-familiarizing myself with my collection and doing the five palette or the five, I keep saying five palette one look that would be ridiculous the five looks out of one palette videos I feel like I've been doing those so much that I've kind of gotten a little bit away from just my almost like my roots in makeup my safe place in makeup whatever you want to call it and I kind of realized uh, over the past little while especially reading some comments that you guys have been putting up on certain videos of mine that like my channel is really just about um, almost like achievable makeup if that makes sense and I'm not trying to say that like a lot of big beauty gurus don't put up looks that are achievable but you know they get sent all these products all the time. They're constantly changing out things, this and that. And some of them are doing these a beautiful, crazy eye looks that I don't know about you guys, but I personally struggle to replicate. So I wanted just to go back and get back into a really simple and easy makeup look today that is very fresh. It's very... Um, you know, kind of minimal with a bit of like a bright lip. Basically where this all stemmed is I was thinking about my EXO Beauty. This is the Ineffable Luxe Liquid Lipstick. It's like this super bright pink and I knew I wanted to use that today and I was like, if I want to use that, I should stick to a more like toned down rest of my face. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. Now this look did require the slightest bit of prep work just because for today, I wanted to be very hydrated, very uh, not so much glowy in the sense that I have done sometimes, but I already started out earlier today. I've been moisturizing like crazy, kind of prepping my skin. Uh, I personally have dry skin. It's kind of like dry to normal, I suppose. I don't collect oils really anywhere. Um, so obviously if you have an oilier skin type or maybe your skin is drier than mine or whatever, you might need to tweak this like prep stage to fit your personal skin type. So for me, I used my St. Ives. This is the glowing oil-free face moisturizer in watermelon. I love this stuff. I'm a big fan of like aqua bombs that like the second you put them on, you just feel immediately like quenched and um, glowy and really nice. So I used that. And then a couple hours later, I threw on my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. Now, this is a primer and moisturizer in one. So I put this on probably about, time is it right now? Yeah, about 45 minutes ago and just let that soak into the face. A lot of times I find that I try and put too many primers on all at once and it makes my face really wet. But this is going to be about a lot of hydrating, a lot of like glowing and stuff like that. So we're going to add another one. Now, like I said, you don't need to layer primers. Every primer does something a little different, uh, which is why I'm layering quite a bit. Um, but that's just for me. If you have an oilier skin type, maybe you want to just use like an oil control primer or something like that. So I've got my Becca First Light Priming Filter. So I'm just going to take a couple pumps of that and put that on. Now this is... Ooh, oh my, got a little gunk there. Uh, this is kind of like a radiance, it brightens, it's got a little bit of a sheen to it, but nothing too crazy because like I said, I'm not trying, I've done a look on my channel before where I went super duper glowy. Um, that's not really what I'm trying to achieve today. I just want something that's very healthy looking, really quick and easy um, that you could like chuck on your face in like, you know, 15 minutes. Obviously, is this video going to be 15 minutes long? No, and that's because I talk throughout the whole thing. So, you know, take out all the talking and all the explanation of what products I'm using. And ooh, it's in my hair. Oh, this is why people wear headbands. Okay, I'm actually going to run and go get a headband. I also forgot to wet my beauty blender. Give me a second. The, oh, so unfortunately, I was just about to start again, but we're going to have the same problem. The only headband I have is this Christmas unicorn headband, but since I'm like half out of the frame, you guys can't really see it, so it's not that bad. Uh, I don't normally wear headbands when I do my makeup, and I probably should, um, because I do get it in my hair a lot, but whatever. So I'm actually gonna put on just a tiny, tiny bit of a MAC strobe cream. This, per per this particular one happens to be in 
peach light. I don't want a ton of this. I'm not trying to get super, super glowy. Uh, I just want a little bit more hydration. You know, I'm really, really going for it with this. And you'll notice that I only really put it here on my cheeks and definitely on my forehead. I stayed away from um, areas where I've got some bigger pores because unfortunately, like a lot of things, the strobe cream will soak into your pores and it kind of like gives it a glow in those areas. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want my pores uh, glowing personally. I'm just going in with my Tatcha, the silk canvas on those more uh, porous areas, I suppose is really the word that I'm looking for. So that's going to be all around my nose and kind of in my T-zone in between my eyebrows. Those are the areas that I personally have a lot of bigger pores. Now, some people, you know, won't have them in that area. Some people are going to be worse than mine. Some people are going to have them around your chin. Again, customize this to whatever you need in your makeup routine. Um, that's the thing is, like, I found that, you know, I've done this a million times where I've just blindly followed somebody's makeup routine without really adjusting it to my own needs my own skin type so you know I've seen some girls where they carve out their eyebrows with concealer I don't do that because I, I don't know why I don't I just don't but uh, for foundation today we're going to use the MAC Studio Face and Body Foundation so I have two shades I have N3 which is kind of my more natural shade and I also have N5 which is my summer uh, bronze shade so I'm going to mix them together a little bit because obviously I haven't been going tanning lately um, it's been nice out but not nice enough out to really lay out in like the yard or anything and to be honest we are in a townhouse and unfortunately when you look out like the back windows um, you can see into like I don't know like a lot of people's backyards and it's not my primary goal in life to uh, lay out my backyard and have like 20 neighbors staring at me so I haven't been doing it but whatever I love this foundation it gives the skin you know it's a very buildable foundation I've talked about it a lot on my channel it is definitely my favorite go-to flawless foundation in a sense that it's not really full coverage. Um, it's buildable, but at the same time, it's it's more the effect that it gives. It gives your skin a very, like, my skin, but better kind of effect. It's very, very, like, makes your skin look super, super health, healthy. Very, like, you can see it's got some glow. It's not going to take away from anything that you've got on underneath. So if you have a strobe cream underneath, it's not just going to cover that and take away from it. It's almost going to work together with that. Uh, like I said, it is buildable. So in the areas that I do need more coverage, for example, my chin, I can definitely get that just by layering it. Um, but in the areas where, you know, maybe I just want a little bit of a color correction, a little bit more evenness, you can put on a pretty thin layer. This stuff doesn't settle into pores weird it doesn't cling to fine lines or creases and it feels very very hydrating it's one of the reasons it's my favorite foundation is just because it just feels so nice on the skin so I'm hoping you guys can see like it's definitely you know taken it's not doing a really full coverage kind of a job but I don't feel like I need that, to be honest. I have some problem areas that can be touched up with spot concealing. Uh, for the most part, I just wanted some evenness, a little bit, just to kind of like smooth out whatever I've got. This next thing is probably going to come as no surprise. We are going to get into my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. This is in the shade Light 2 Vanilla. I mentioned in a recent video that I wanted to see what happened when I just used this concealer because I have a habit of putting this concealer on and then packing on another concealer over top and I honestly don't know that it's necessary like it's doing a pretty good job on its own canceling out the dark circles under my eye any discoloration any redness um, and even though it's a very complete concealer it's not heavy it doesn't sit heavy it doesn't crease up funny it feels very very comfortable 
And if you really do a good job and get the right shade, it also has a beautiful brightening effect. So for once in my life, I actually am going to go with a less is more kind of an option and just stick to that and not add uh, a second concealer where I normally would. I was thinking about going in with my Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. This is the concealer that they eventually replaced with the Stay Naked. They don't make this one anymore. Um, so I'm kind of in a phase where I'm trying to use it up, but uh, I honestly think I'm just gonna leave that concealer as is. For brows, we're gonna go in with our MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint. Now this has a, I've talked about this a million times, I don't know why more people don't use it. Uh, it's got a felt tip on one end and a powder on the other end. It's kinda like, you know, I understand for people that like a product like the Precisely My Brow, uh, or the Brow Wiz or the Micro Brow from NYX or something like that, that you might not like a felt tip. Um, I was a little hesitant of it in the beginning. I found that it took a bit to get used to, but much like anything, once you practice it, it becomes easier and you kind of find a rhythm with products. And that's kind of where I'm at with this, is that I have figured out how it works best for me and just gone with it. So I always like to uh, give my brows a bit of shape, kind of decide where I want them, where I want the edges to be. It's really great for that. And then I sort of just take that powder and fill in. Now I'm not like a lot of, I always kind of count myself in the category of a beauty guru and I really don't think that I am. I think I just happen to really like makeup. I think I'm addicted to makeup, um, which works for me. Uh, but, you know, more than that, it's like, where was I going with this? I don't have the perfect eyebrows that a lot of people have, but I like the way mine are. I've done them myself for forever. I've never had them professionally tweezed, waxed, anything, because one time I went overboard on my own, so I don't trust anybody else to do it. I'm really quickly just going to go ahead with this eyeshadow base. Normally I use my MAC Painterly Paint Pot, but I wanna give this one a second shot. This is the Pretty Vulgar Uncaged Eyeshadow Base. I wasn't a big fan of it the first time I used it, but I'm thinking I just didn't give it enough time to dry down. So I'm gonna put this on a little bit earlier in my routine um, because it's a very, very sticky eyeshadow primer. Uh, but I don't know if it was only really sticky because I didn't give it enough dry down time or if that's just the kind of effect they were going for where it was going to be sticky so maybe it was going to hold on to shadows better. I don't know. But before I completely pass judgment on this product, I want to give it a second chance and see if I like it any better. Um than I did the first time. We're gonna just give it another go, so I'm gonna give it a little bit more time just to tack down. In terms of setting our makeup today, I'm just gonna go with my old faithful Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. Now, I don't want this all over my face. I really only want this like where we put that concealer because I don't want it creasing up or uh, moving on me. So a lot of times I will set my entire face with this, but because we're going for a fresher, lighter kind of a look, uh, I'm only really going to set it in under my eyes, across my chin, and then a little bit on my nose, just because those are the places that I personally concealed. If you concealed on your forehead, you might want to put it on your forehead. If you concealed under your nose, you might want to put it there. Wherever you did it, you might want to set it. That's, again, it's completely up to you. But I know that I'm going to be putting some more powder on my face in the, sh the form of like bronzers and blushes. I don't want to overload myself. I really want to feel very light, very fresh, very natural, as natural as I can. For blush today, we're going to go in with the Balm Bahama Mama bronzer. Uh, I haven't used this in a really long time, and I was going through my bronzer drawer trying to pick something out, and this is the one that stood out to me, so we're going to go with this today. So again, this is going to be completely where you would decide what to do. If you are a contour queen, you contour. Uh, you do you. Uh, I don't contour very well. I really struggle with it. I more am an all over the face kind of bronzer girl. It's just a personal opinion. I just, you know, I think that came also especially from 
you know, years and years and years of going uh, tanning in indoor tanning beds that I ended up just bronzing my whole face because I wanted some warmth there and I just wasn't getting it in the bed. Because I do, here's the thing, when I go tanning in a bed, I will lay out for a while and then when I've gotten, like say I'm going in there for seven or eight minutes, when I've gotten to about the halfway point, I'll put a towel over my face because I have made the mistake of not doing that before and really burning my face and also really like, I freckle really, really badly. <clears throat> Which is fine, I know a lot of people are looking for freckles, but I didn't like where they were coming up. I wasn't a big fan of them, so I said never again, and uh, I've been really careful ever since. For a blush today, I'm just going to go with my MAC Mineralize Blush in Warm Soul. Somebody, when I asked about Shop My Stash, mentioned they wanted to see either Mineralize Blushes or I think an... It might have been a mineralized blush or a Natasha Denona blush. I can't remember. I'll go back and look. I'm going to film that video later this week for you guys. So that'll be up shortly after. But this is just the most beautiful natural blush color. And because it's a mineralized blush, it's kind of like a baked blush. It does give you the slightest amount of a reflect to it. And... It's just a very, very subtle, natural kind of a flush color, at least for my skin tone. Obviously, if you're looking for a similar effect, adjust it to whatever your skin tone is. If you're fair like I am, you could definitely use this. If you have a medium or a deeper skin tone, something else might work better for you. You'll know that better than I will. But for me, I just want a nice natural. Also, I like to focus my blush on the apples of my cheeks and then pull kind of upwards but everybody puts their blush in a different way. Go with your face shape. If it makes more sense just to have it on the apples of your cheeks, do that. If it makes more sense to have it a little higher, if it's part of your contouring and highlighting routine, you do you. This is just how I'm doing it. I found, I don't know why I feel like it's so important for me to say that during this video, but I do. For a highlight, we're gonna go with an old faithful one. We're gonna do my MAC Soft and Gentle. This is my holy grail of all holy grail highlighters. I love it. It gives you this gorgeous, gorgeous highlight without being too glittery, without being over the top. Again, perfect for someone with my kind of a skin tone. If you are have a deeper skin tone, I don't know how well this would work for you, but they have tons of options. They have like Global Glow is another really, really gorgeous highlighter that they offer that is in the uh, mineralized skin finish form. They have Lights Capade if you're even fairer and don't think that this will work for you. They have tons. Cheeky Bronze I think is another one. I used to have like all of them and over time I've just only kept this one because it's my favorite and it was a lot of people's favorites for a long time and as new highlighters came into the game I feel like I feel like everybody has kind of like gone off and found other products but I keep coming back to that one I have never found another like champagne -y blush that really does what this blush is able to do so I'm just kind of so my eyes are still a little tacky, but we're gonna go ahead with this anyway. Now, like I said, for a lip today, I knew I wanted to go big and bright and bold. So I thought I would go with a little bit more neutral of an eye. So we're actually gonna play with my Tarte Tartlet Toasted Palette, which I haven't dragged out of my collection in forever, it feels like. Now, this has been a much loved palette. You can tell the mirror is disgusting. Uh, the pans have some dips in them. When I got this palette, I was just obsessed with it. And it's not that I'm not obsessed with it anymore. I just got more palettes over the time that I was doing this. And I forgot about this one. So I thought today was the perfect day to bring it out. We're just going for something very light, very natural looking. Um, nothing too crazy. Obviously, if you changed up the lip to something more neutral, you could do a darker eye, or if you like the combo of both, do both. But for me, I wanted this to be a fresh look with just a bright punch of color for summertime. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take Sunrise, and I'm going to just dust it all over my lid. Now, I'm hoping that that's also going to set in some of that um, primer, 
because the problem that I found the last time that I did a look with this and that video should already be up if you're interested in looking at it I will uh, link it up in the cards and also down below the problem I had is that I found that the brush was catching when I was trying to get into my crease work and things like that and I didn't like that so we're gonna take the color latte it's like a really really stunning light brown now this palette has like not lost any of its pigmentation over the years it's still gorgeous still performing flawlessly I'm actually surprised that this is the only like tart tartlet palette I think I dabbled with getting the in bloom one at one point or another and then I think I just backed away from it because most of the tartlet palettes are quite neutral and I had a lot of neutral shadows so I think I was trying to like experiment with colors and things like that but as far as like the higher end brands go I think Tarte is just a great one it's on it's sorry it kind of for me sits about on par with MAC when I was younger I used to think MAC was so freaking expensive I was like, oh my gosh, I'm spending this much on a lipstick or this much on an eyeshadow. I'm crazy. And I mean, in some rationality, I think just because of the quantity that I have, it is a little bit crazy. But having said that, like a MAC lipstick will cost $25 or something like that. And a lip gloss is like $23. Then you look at the NARS lipsticks that are $45, the Pat McGrath lipsticks, the ja Marc Jacobs lipsticks the YSLs, which are up in the like high 40s, low 50s kind of range. And it really makes you take a step back and realize like comparably to other brands, Mac's not that bad. I actually find Mac very, very affordable, very, very reliable. They know their formulas. They've been around for a very long time and they know what they do right and they stick to it. And I love that. Um, and I kind of find Tarte is like a very comparable brand, even though Tarte is going all out there right now and trying to, and being very innovative, coming up with tons of new things. They're getting really, really into the uh, natural kind of realm of things with like their uh, found sealer. It was supposed to be very natural looking. They just came out with like a hydro concealer. They're trying to be very, very like in the realm of like skincare meets cosmetics and makeup and I really like that and they are affordable like I I don't know what to say other than that I'm gonna stop rambling I've been talking for a really long time we're gonna get into the color warmth just a little bit I do want to add just a little bit of that kind of towards the outside I love that latte color oh it's so pretty That might be my favorite color in the palette. And because of that, let's take it and push it underneath our eye. We're just gonna go in with a pencil brush and latte. And I'm just going to take that underneath. I don't always like to go underneath with a really dark color. Sometimes it's nice just to have like your uh, base crease color and then you build on top of it and then that all kind of brings it back together. It's really pretty. Just like that, we are gonna dip into Cozy. I haven't even been showing you colors. I've just been assuming that everybody knows what this palette looks like. It's been out for forever, it's still available. I will link it down below. And just with that, I'm just going to kind of take it a bit on the lid, a bit in the outer corner. Like I said, I want this to be very light, nothing crazy. The last part of this is going to be taking the darkest color in the palette which is fireside and putting that in a v out here now as long as i'm happy with where this is in the crease then that is enough for me because i am going to be going over it with some shimmer shimmer colors And you'll notice that I'm blending all of these together with my finger. Your finger is like your own personal makeup tool. It's obviously it's your finger. You get a really good feel for how things work with it. So it always works. I think I need a little bit more darkness here. Biggest struggle in my life making my eyes match. All right, so for a shimmer, we're gonna go in with the color Sunset. It's like a really, really pretty, like champagne -y gold. 
I'm gonna put that pretty much all over the lid. Like I said, we could go with one of the darker shimmers. There's a flame color that's quite beautiful, but I don't want this to get crazy because we've got the bright lip coming up. And then I'm gonna go into Candle, which is like a really, really light color, and just tap that in the inner corner and blend it up a bit. Now that color for me is very soft. That's the only thing is that I did lose that color for a significant length of time. It was hiding under a desk on the floor and I found it eventually. So that's that. For an eyeliner today, I just got this Hank and Henry Slick With It Blickety Black Eyeliner in a boxy charm and I've used it once and I really really liked it so we're going to use it again and just see if it goes just as well the second time. I think I would have preferred maybe to go in with a brown liner just to again keep it a little bit light but we're here now so let's just get her done. I would say at this point also that if you are a liner winger kind of person you go ahead and you wing your liner. I'm not that kind of person. I really struggle with it. Uh, so we're just going to go simple today. All right, so nice and easy. I do really like this liner. It's very easy to work with. It is not the blackest eyeliner I've ever used. I would say, I think my Stila Stay All Day liquid liner is actually like the blackest one. I think I tested this one day. But it's still really nice. For mascara, I'm just using my Benefit Roller Lash in combination with my Too Faced Better Than Sex. Again, sub out for your own favorite mascara or mascara combination. All that's left to do is get into our lip. So we are going to use the super bright vibrant pink. Now just as a safety precaution because I have used one of these recently and it wasn't the most opaque thing I ever used. Now it could be because they're old, I can't really remember. I'm gonna go in with an XO Beauty lip liner as well. This is in the color Shannon. I'm pretty sure it was the color that was meant to go with that. Uh, it's just like a super bright pink. Now. If you're into a more coral kind of a thing, go with a bright coral, go with a bright red, an orangey red, a purple. Make this whatever you want. I wanted to use this without going the Barbie route because I, I dabbled with that, with doing like a Barbie kind of a look, but I don't know, that's just not who I am, so. This is my way of wearing a Barbie pink lip color without making myself look too Barbie-ish. Also, these lip liners are fantastic. The If you live in Canada or the United States, I don't want to discourage people from ordering from this brand because it's fantastic. The lip liners in particular are so, so good. However, when I ordered from them, I ended up paying a lot in customs and duty charges to get them over here, so just be aware of that. For a long time, I used to wear a ton of really bright lipsticks, especially when I used to work at the bar. I used to love doing a really soft, neutral eye and then getting into something super bright in terms of a lip. And I got away from that, and I don't know why, because I really do like the way it looks. So while I let that dry down, uh, we will spray a little setting spray. I'm just using, you guys have seen this a million times lately. I know you're probably bored of it, but I'm trying to uh, use this up. I'm saving some empties to try and do my first empties video for you guys. Uh, and this is the one I'm the closest to using up, unfortunately. This and a MAC product that I have that you can't even get anymore. So I want to use this up first. So that is the look for today. 
I'm really, really happy with the way that it turned out. I got a little bit, oh God, I think I got it in my hair. Anyway, like I was saying, I got a little bit more into an eye than I thought I was going to. I really thought I was gonna stay, like not that it's not neutral, but it's a little bit more orangey reddish than I plan on going, but thankfully it still all works. So I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. In terms of the eyeshadow primer, I think I figured out that you just need to give it time to set down and maybe this is one where you do need to set it with a light dusting of some kind of a light eyeshadow color for it to really work because it gave me zero problems today. I'm really happy with the way it looked. I'm just going to kind of have to wait and see, um, you know, if it holds in a couple hours, if my eyeshadow has moved at all, smudged at all, whatever. But other than that, here we are. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any questions you guys ever have for me about anything? Uh, I know I don't know everything about makeup, but I know some things about makeup. If you ever want to talk, or ask questions or just be friends message me in the comments down below I always try to reply to um, people especially people that are asking questions and talking about you know different products that they like I always try and get back to everybody or if you really want go to my Instagram it's linked down below and send me a DM I will try and make sure I post more to there I've been dabbling with the idea of just combining my YouTube one with my personal one because I do have two separate ones, but I'm bad at posting on both, so I haven't quite decided yet. But if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.